At one time, I was a, a I had backslidden, and um, it was 1987 that I backslid, 1988, something like that, and I left God. Okay, I was on I was on fire, minister of God, preacher, minister of a church, and um, one day I woke up and decided that I was going to leave God. Don't know exactly how it happened, but I did leave him, and I went out and and uh, changed uh, my life. I just, I kind of just thought that I, you know, always have God there for me, and He knew my mistakes, and you know, He was going to be there regardless of uh, what I did, and I could count on Him and and such. You know, I was gifted with the with the wonderful gift of salvation. I think probably. Hundreds of people. I used to go down to the, on the streets of Portland, Oregon, and and minister to people. People get saved every day. Me and uh, a couple of other guys that are ministers and pastors of churches in Portland, Oregon. Now, they didn't leave God. I did, and you know, I would preach, and you know, dozens of people would get saved at the at the meetings, and you know, it was it was great because people were just getting saved left and right. And then I left God. Um, I was a backslider. I, the thing about uh, leaving God is, you know, it's not a revolving door because he will shut the door. He will shut the door on you. He shut the door on me. And what happened is it took me probably 25 to 26 years to really get back my relationship with God. Like I, it's better now than it, it had been back then. But, um, it took a long time, and you know, I was I took a big risk by doing that too. You know, I risked going to hell. There was plenty of times in that twenty-five year period that I, I uh, my life was definitely in jeopardy, and I put myself in a lot of danger. And if I would have died, I would have went to hell. That's um, put it lightly. Um, I'm glad that uh, God didn't allow that because. Um, well, let's just say that's a place where nobody wants to go forever. And so the door was shut on me. And I tried to come back. I tried to go back to God. I tried to get a, a new relationship with him or continue where I left off. And I tried and tried and tried within that 25-year period. It was the hardest thing ever. It was so, so hard. You know, I think that he even turned me over to a reprobate mind. That's in the Bible. Um, I didn't look up to where the scripture is, but it's, a, it's called a reprobate mind. And that means you're, he, he'll turn your mind off from him. And you'll end up forgetting about him, forgetting about his power, forgetting about what he's done for you in the past. And, you know, he'll just shut you. He'll just flip it like a switch. And then your mind just goes backwards instead and mine did in 2012 he he reopened the door and i it took a long time for that to happen and stepped in and my relationship started growing again but you see see the thing is you know the his a relationship with the lord is not a door that you really want to just walk out of because you might not make it back you know the relationship with God is precious. It's something that you just don't want to just take for granted. You know, you know, you take the risk of, um, I took the risk of uh, never, ever getting even a partial relationship back with God or even a, a full restoration. With, with the relationship with God. Very, very risky. You know, you just can't take chances with God you, because he, he, he's mysterious. He works individually, but he's, all, he's very, very mysterious. And you, you, you'll be, you know, I was, I was talking to him. I would cry out to God. I would cry, literally cry to God. 
and I would get never, I never got answers. I never, it was the relation, it just seemed like he wasn't there. And I know he was there, but there's nothing more frustrating than talking to your father or your creator or anybody and then never getting a response back. He could have responded a little bit. You know, he still, I was still blessed. I was still under grace, but I couldn't tell, you know, uh, went through ups and downs, homelessness and joblessness and going through wives like water go through it will go through your fingers and your hand relationships and just you know I totally had at, at some point just had forgotten that God was even there I don't think he wanted me to know he was because that's what he'll do to you when he turns your mind back over to yourself he leaves you to your own devices You know, at one point, probably, I think it was 1995, you know, I joined this church in, in uh, over in the Everett, Seattle area, and I was really trying to get to know God. I mean, I even tried to go to a, a college, a Christian college over there, which I didn't get accepted, but I was really trying to press into God, but I was still out there, you know, but I wanted to turn my life around, and you know, I went, I, I joined this church and, you know, me and the pastor became really good friends and I became his uh, personal assistant and driver. And, and me and him, we would go to church at 630 in the morning, get up real early, and uh, you know, about four days a week and pray on our knees. And sometimes we'd be the only two people there. Maybe there'd be, at other times, maybe there was one or other two people, but I was really trying to press into God. And then you know, being his assistant, I was always going to different services around the city, the different churches. So for eight to ten times a week, I was in church, seriously pressing into God, worshiping and praising him. And I could never get that relationship back, it seemed. It was just the hardest thing in the world to do. You know, and I did that for six years, six, seven years with him. And it was, and then I, it was nothing no relationship, but I, I couldn't tell the Lord was there because it was, it was, my life was so difficult. It was so hard. You know, 600 people got saved in, in the church that I presently go to in the past six months, 600 people. There's only like 80 or 100 that will even go there on a Sunday. Now, I'm wondering what happened to all these people, you know? People get saved, and then they, they, they think they can do it on their own, and it's, it just doesn't work like that. They get saved, and they don't, you know, strengthen their relationship with God with worship or prayer or, or Bible reading or, you know, spending time with him and learning how to trust and learning how to believe in him and press into him. 600 people we're talking about. Where are they? You know, I'm, never, I'm not even going to see most of these people ever again. Maybe they went to another church, which is okay. But 600? I don't live in a, a... My town is so small. You know, 600 people is a lot of people. So just remember, you know, don't, don't take the risk. You know, if you get saved, if you get delivered of something, if you get delivered of, of, of a drug or alcohol like I did... Don't go, don't leave the church and then think that you can go back out there and drink or, or, or smoke weed or, or smoke crack or meth or whatever it is, whatever drug. You know, I don't have anything against anybody who does drugs because I used to do them and I used to drink, you know, we're, you know, I, I have no judgment whatsoever, but if God delivers you or if he saves you, it's time for you to really push and press in. I mean, that's otherwise you're going to lose it. You can you, nobody sits still in the Lord. You get saved, you need that's when you real it's going to be difficult. I'm going to tell you right now, being being born again Christian is the heart one of the hardest things that you'll ever do. That's what that's what uh, ministers aren't telling the Christians. It's going to be hard. It's supposed to be hard. You're a son of God, you're a daughter of God. He's training you for to help serve him and worship him. And, and, you know, for all eternity, 
You're his servant. You're his son. You're his daughter. He wants you to be the best of the best of the best. Of course it's going to be hard. But don't go back doing the same things that you was doing before, hanging out with the same friends, because it'll pull you away from God. You don't want to go backwards. If you go backwards, there's a chance that you may never, ever get back. And you could end up jeopardizing and losing your soul for all eternity. And you don't want to do that. You know, you've, if you've heard the, 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 the term pressing the, to the Lord, what it means is the Lord is inside of you. Not only around you, above you, on, on the outside of you, you know, shielding you, covering you, even when you're in sin. But he's inside of you. So you got to reach it. You got to learn how to get in there and find him. Because he'll walk in your garden when you can walk in his, or excuse me, he'll walk in your garden when he can walk in yours. The garden is the fruits of the spirit. Find the fruits of the spirit in the Bible and work on them, work on them one at a time. Stay in, his, um, in the Lord's um, presence. You know, press in and stay there. It's, you might have to give up all your family. You might have to give up all your friends. It just depends on how bad you want a relationship with God. You know, but if you really want to grow in him, you can. But don't leave it up to the, the, the pastor on Sunday to get a 15-minute uh, hour message and think that's going to be enough. That's not going to be enough. You're going to have to do reading. You're going to have to be talking to God all day, praying. You're going to have to start practice. you got to start somewhere. You know, when you get good at one thing and pressing in God, find something else to do in the Lord and keep on going and keep on growing. That's what I found out from per personal experiences. And I'm going to pray for all the backsliders out there and the people of the, of the Lord because I don't want to see you guys leave God. If too many people are leaving God. The great falling away is here. And I don't want to see anyone else leave the Lord. So we'll, uh, we're going to do a declaration and then I'm going to pray. Um, the declaration is Psalms 27. It's in the description area if you'd like to follow along down there or you can just get your Bible out or, um, you know, go on the internet like, like I do sometimes to Bible Gateway and you can just read it off of there. Psalms 27, we have 7 through 14. Read. And do this with your spouse and your whole family every day. Do a declaration. Read it together out loud in your house. And then everyone do their individual prayers together. Get on your knees, one by one by one, and then pray, and then go your separate ways. And that's how you grow in Christ. It's a good start anyway. Great habit to get into. This is, this is just an example. You don't have to do it exactly like this. Ready? Mm-hmm. Hear, O oh Lord, when, when I, I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me, me and answer me. me. When thou saidst, seek my, my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breed out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And Lord, I repent for the remission and the forgiveness of every sin I've ever committed in my life. Father, take me back. It's, a, it's rough out here without you, Lord. It's super hard. And it's really hard getting back in touch with you like I used to be, Lord God. And then keep me, Lord Jesus. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. 
Lord Jesus. I'm going to read. I'm going to find a Holy Spirit-filled church and go to it. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to worship you like crazy, Lord Jesus, from now on, and I'm going to try. I might even have to eliminate a few of my friends and stop hanging out with the wrong people, Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that I'm not perfect. There's things I'm doing right now, and I know that you don't approve of, but I'm going to try. I'm going to give it my best shot, Lord Jesus Christ, to uh, please you, Lord Jesus. It might take a while, but I'm going to. I'm not going to let those things uh, keep me from talking to you because I can't hide anything from you anyway, Father. You see everything. So it's not like you don't know that I'm doing what I'm doing. Hear my cry, Father. Hear me when I cry, and you've heard me cry, and I cry, and I've been trying to get back to you. Hear my voice, Lord God. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus Christ, and I know you do. I know you've had plenty of mercy on me, and I know you will continue to have mercy on me, and I thank you for that. Also, Lord, answer my prayers, Lord Jesus. Hear my prayers and answer my prayers, Lord Jesus. When thou said, Seek thy face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. I'm going to seek you. I'm going to do the best I can to seek you. I just don't want to go backwards anymore. I need to move forward, Lord Jesus Christ. I would pray that you just open the door. Open the door for me to, and, 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 and so that I can step in and be in your presence, Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, hide, don't hide your face from me, Lord. I want to see it. I want to feel it. I want to feel you. I want to feel your presence every day. From now on, Lord Jesus, don't put me away, Lord Jesus. Do not put me away, Lord Jesus. Take me back. Father. Don't be angry with me, Lord. Forgive me. I need your help. You've been my help. You've been helping me all along, and I haven't even recognized how much you've helped me, but I need more of your help for sure. And don't leave me, Lord. Never, ever leave me, oh God. I don't want to ever leave me, not now or ever, Lord Jesus. Don't forget about me, Lord and be my salvation. And I want to, I want salvation. I want eternal salvation, Lord Jesus, instead of you leaving me, Lord Jesus, instead of you forgetting about me, Lord Jesus. And Father, even when my, even when my friends forsake me, my parents, because I might have to give up a lot of relationships because of bad influences, Lord Jesus, you take me, you keep me, you give me the strength that I need, Lord. And teach me your way. That's what I want. I need you, oh Lord, to teach me your way of living. Teach me how to press into you because I know you're in there. I know you're inside of me. I want you to emerge from inside of me, from the core of my being to the outside of my skin. And I want you to stay. I want to walk in your spirit inside of your spirit, Lord Jesus, that is inside of me, and lead me, and make it make it plain and simple, so that I can walk with you, and make it, I know it's not going to be easy, but just make it, make me know that I'm, walk, I'm walking with you, and let me know that you're with me, and I know it's going to seem like you're not with me at times, but you're, you're always there. And cast my enemies away from me, Lord Jesus Christ. All the devils and demons and unclean spirits purify me and deliver me right now. I pray in Jesus' name. I cage them. I bind them all in Jesus' name right now. And ask warrior angels to arrest them and cast them down under my feet, far, far, far down, permanently. Lord Jesus Christ, deliver me. I want deliverance. I want deliverance for the, from the things that I do that I know I shouldn't be doing, that I things that I enjoy that I know I shouldn't be doing, things that I don't enjoy that I shouldn't be doing. Deliver me, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I fainted. I left you. I backslid. 
But I've always believed in you, Lord Jesus. I've always known you were God. And even if I didn't know that, show me. Show me your way, Lord Jesus Christ. Show me your way and teach me your way. And make me a, a real hardcore believer in you, Lord. Make yourself more real to me than ever before. And I'm going to wait. I need to learn how to wait. This is a big problem I have with patience and waiting on anything. I want everything yesterday. But show me how to wait. Teach me your way. Teach me your way on how to wait on you, Lord, so I can get good at it and quicken it to my mind that I need to calm down and relax and just wait on you and be of, and be courageous while I'm waiting in the hard times. It's going to be hard. I know it's going to be hard to do this, but give me the courage to wait on you, Lord, and give me the strength. I need strength. Give me all the strength I need to wait on you, Father, and all the courage I need to wait on you. Because that's these things are also inside of me, Lord Jesus. So I, they're inside of your spirit. And I pray the spirit of the Lord rise up quickly inside of me, quickly inside of my heart as I wait on you, Lord. And I say this to you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I'm fortunate. I have food, shelter, water, a job. And there's people around the world who don't have any of that stuff. I'm blessed. I pray that you'll sh show them your every single person your love today all across the world, Lord, and give the people exactly what they need, Lord Jesus Christ. And let them know that you love them very, very much, and you're the one who's uh, blessing them with what they need. And I pray for this. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen.